release from in the morning. Welcome to another episode of Director Showcase. I'm B-Movie Paul. And I'm Phantom Dark Dave. Well, it's the start of a new month, which of course means a new director whose films we will be reviewing. This month we've chosen the king of body horror himself, David Cronenberg. And what better way to start off things than with a review of the 1986 remake of The Fly. So Dave, what did you think of The Fly? I like how you pronounce that it's a remake. So many people just completely forget that the original came out in 1958 and had the amazing Vincent Price in it. But you know what? I got to (laughs) say, I've always known who David Cronenberg was, but I realized I've seen none of his films. So doing the director showcase is genius. So last night I watched The Fly from 1986 for the first time, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, it was definitely interesting. I I gotta say I enjoyed it. I mean, it's got Jeff Goldblum in it, so that's always a plus. Yeah, I feel the same way, and and I was talking to my wife too, and I was telling her about it, and she's like, "Yeah, Jeff Goldblum's awesome," and I'm like, "Man, like so many people knock him, but then I noticed a few people around me who actually make sense like him. That's really cool." Yeah, I don't see how anyone can not like him. He just seems like. So it's a likable guy. I mean, even in this movie, he was um, did some not so likable stuff. But yeah, he's still Jeff Goldblum, so you can't completely dislike him. That's like the alternate ending. It's like I know you're the fly and you've done some bad things, but it's okay because you're Jeff Goldblum. I forgive you. <laughs> but no, um, in all seriousness, watching this movie was an absolute delight. Um, everything from beginning to end, I never got bored. It, to me, it never had a slow part, and I think that it was perfectly casted. Oh, definitely. Between um, Jeff Goldblum, obviously, and um, playing the scientist who built the teleporter and turns into a giant fly man, and um, Gina Davis playing his uh, girlfriend, it they were both really good. I didn't, I mean, no one else really in the film was all that important. Like, you had the um, Gina Davis's boss, but eh, it didn't really matter. And that really guy is such a tool. Point. Oh, yeah. Did you recognize him? Yeah, he looked familiar, but... He is know. also a tool in another movie. Uh, he's in Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. He was kind of like the creepy employee who was hitting on the younger girl. And when I was watching this, I'm like, oh, it's that creepy dude. Oh, what a surprise. He's also creepy in this. <laughs> I wonder if he's creepy in real life or he's just a good actor. He's, he's probably the know. nicest person ever. <laughs> but um, that that's one thing, too. You know, when you're watching the beginning of the movie, the credits are so quick because there's not a lot of people in this movie. And I loved that. It kept it, you know, very close quarters. And I think that helped with why there was never slow parts is because everything was, for the most part, important. Oh, yeah, they were able to focus on just a few characters and the plot rather than, like, all this other stuff, and I like the way they did that. You know, for 1986, the graphics were awesome. Oh, yeah, this was quite a quite a thing to watch, like, because um, most of it, since it's a David Cronenberg film, it was um, all this body, body horror with um, Jeff Goldblum's character turning into a literal fly man, and his um, face starts... Um, getting deformed and mutated and um he at one point his ear falls off now that was that was disturbing but it was it looked cool and his reactions are just amazing it's like oh well that's not good and at one point he spits out all this stuff says huh well that was disgusting like i feel like only jeff goldblum could have pulled that off yeah i, I loved his all-around character um When you meet him, you realize this guy doesn't get out a lot. He doesn't really care about making friends. He's really obsessed with his work. But he does find Gina Davis attractive, which is really funny because at the time in real life they were together. So the chemistry was real. But, you know, you see Jeff Goldblum and he wears like the same outfit every day. He's a very just repetitive kind of guy. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And then as he goes through his transformation process you know he doesn't wear the suit no more he like walks around with his shirt off and i'm like holy crap jeff goldblum's got muscle <laughs> jeff goldblum's a badass Arm yeah. this guy and like literally like breaks the guy's arm that was pretty awesome it was and you know for a lot of folks out there who 
kind of are like, I'm not really sure what um, he means when he says body horror. Yeah, Paul's saying it right, literally body horror. If every other Cronenberg film is like this, I got it. I'm going to be watching movies where people are just going to get freaking mutilated with practical effects, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's basically just like disgusting things happening to a person, like mutilation and like this weird metamorphosis thing. It's, um, yeah, basically, um, it's like, it's like, it's, uh, it sounds body horror. There's no, um, real getting around that. If you get on your phone and you type in body horror, it better pull up David Cronenberg. Yeah, it might bring you some websites you really don't want to go to. Though. Yeah, have your filter on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Reminds but, me of... um, man, you know, spinning image of the 80s, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's hair was so poofy. It was awesome. Like... <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, man. But how about his lab? So, you know, you think about a laboratory and, you know, you got some guys who have it kind of like in their basement and that's a version of creepy. And then you have some labs that are like in this high rise, but not Jeff Goldblum. He's got like this abandoned warehouse. Like you would not walk down this alley to save your life type deal. And he meets Gina Davis at a party and he's like, you want to come back to my lab? And, you know, if this is the place you're going to pull up to. It's. I'm amazing. She didn't immediately take a taxi and get out of there. It worked out pretty well. That well, I don't know if it worked out well. I mean, th- some weird stuff uh, happened. So not exactly a happy ending for, or happy middle beginning. And uh, I mean, there's some happy stuff, but um, I can't tell if this is a things ended up well for her or not so well. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, what ends up happening is Gina Davis is an undercover reporter. He thinks that she's just into him. Now, don't get me wrong, she is into him, but, you know, her journalistic instincts do start to portray. And um, what happens is she wants to tell the story. Jeff Globum's like, I thought you liked me. I'll let you tell the story. Just don't tell it right now. I'm not finished with my work. Well... Her boss at her job is her ex-boyfriend, and he's always haggling her for a new story. And so what happens is he kind of puts it out there that if she doesn't help him get the story out, he's going to pretty much just like publish it himself and, and destroy everything and take all the credit. So she goes to talk to her boss about it, and Jeff Goldblum gets ultra jealous, starts drinking a little bit, and decides to put himself into the transporter. But of course – it, not without the fly in there with him. And this begins the process of fusion, of combining the DNA with Jeff Goldblum and a very lucky fly, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. it. Um, yeah, things don't go, t- go too well for him after that point. But um, it's interesting because not only that, but his personality starts changing. He gets um, real angry and he um, kind of violent, too. Like um, He starts... Um, kind of becoming physically hostile toward um, Gina Davis's character, and, like, he kicks her out, saying, you know, don't come here again. It was it was kind of cool. Like, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what, because he was such an odd guy to begin with, exactly how much of him actually changed, or just the fact that we didn't really know much about him to begin with, but he definitely played a complex character, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, he he did a well job. And before stepping into the uh, transporters himself, he was testing on baboons. And man, baboons are creepy and scary, right? Oh yeah, they're they're supposedly really violent too. But uh, they don't show that (laughs) part in the um, movie. Not to Jeff Goldblum. They were all hugging him. I believe Jeff Goldblum can talk to animals. So I mean, why not? He's like Doctor Doolittle. It's the original but, deck. Well, I guess there was an original like years ago before um, Eddie Murphy's one. You know, something that I loved in this movie was um, after Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis kind of have to split ways. They have a fight, an argument, because he's completely being a dick. That's the best way I can say it. He's like, well, she I can't get her to go through the transporter. I'll just go to a bar and pick up a random girl, and I'll bring her home and put her in the transporter. And so he goes to a bar. Like Paul says, arm wrestles a guy and breaks his freaking bone, just pops it right out of his arm. It looks amazing. Um, And, oh, meanwhile, he he told the guy, if I win, I get to take your girl. And he agreed. So he leaves with the girl. And, you know, they go back to his lab, and his full intention is putting her in there. And my favorite line of the whole movie, (laughs) 
he's like she's like all drunk and tired so he just picks her up and carries her up like 10 flights of stairs and she's like oh man are you a bodybuilder or something and he's like yes a bodybuilder yeah sure i build bodies i just thought it was great because well i guess yeah he is kind of doing that pretty much i mean he's not wrong so. <laughs> right but oh man uh the super strength he becomes agile very energetic um man it's just it almost looked like two different actors Oh yeah, it was weird because I, he's turning into a fly, and I don't really think of them that way. I mean, I guess Spider Man's really strong. Um, I'm not sure how strong like a uh, fly is, like how much compared to their body weight they can lift or anything like that. But uh, I, I guess I can't really um, complain about that one. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing when he was. I was like, man, I guess flies. I, I need to give them more credit than than I did before. Yeah. But um. <laughs> It's funny. I was watching it, and my son was in the room, and it and we saw like mid fly Jeff Goldblum, not full transformation, but just grotesque. And he's like, "Wow, that dude looks like he's the Michael Jackson thriller." And I just died laughing because yeah, he totally looked like he was in the thriller video, man. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that, but now that you <laughs> mention it, that's all I can think of now. And then of course he goes from um, you know thriller to hills have eyes look oh yeah uh, like the extreme deformity fast. and the tw- he was twitching nonstop. i mean i just i gotta hand it to him I, I thought it was a brilliant performance and then the special effects team man just oh man the oozing and the puking and like you said the ear falls off and the crawling around the walls i mean it, it uh, i i gotta tell you i'm really glad we did this because man i was missing out on a really good movie Definitely, and then then at the end when his transformation's done, he's um, well not I guess as far as it goes in the film, he's just a he's just a bipedal fly man, and like he, it really looks like a fly, and it's as creepy as all hell. Yeah, and you know as we got down to, um, you know, t- maybe twenty minutes or so left in the movie, maybe thirty, you know, he still wasn't fully transformed yet, and I was thinking, man. I don't know if I can't remember if I if I saw an ad that shows him fully transformed. Maybe he just like is extreme man form with some fly symptoms, and I'm like, okay, that's probably what I'm watching. And then, man, you can tell that they really focused on that final scene, um, almost like they do in like American Werewolf in London transformation. Like, don't don't throw stuff at me. I'm not trying to say it's, it's just as good, but to me, I was just as blown away. Like you get to see this transformation happen right in front of you. And like Paul said, just to see Jeff Goldblum's head, like splitting open and you see like the full head of the fly and you see the bent arms and everything. I mean, (sighs) Ah, that was just awesome. Oh yeah. It was definitely, it was a great ending. Um, well, other than that, there was, um, I just got to point out one scene, which was um, at one point Gina Davis's character thinks she, well, she finds that she's pregnant. She has a dream where she's delivering this like giant larva baby thing, and it's just really creepy. <laughs> like this, this had like, um, yeah, this was really a disturbing movie. Man, it was good, and it was um, definitely something else. Got you thinking, though. I mean, if she's pregnant. Yeah, it could be half fly, half gold bloom. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you catch who the doctor was? Um, no, I didn't quite catch that. He looked from David Cronenberg. Was it really? Yeah, Come he came in as the doctor in it. Looked like, but it's kind yeah, of cheating yeah. because the doctor's uniform is all hidden. But I read everything about it on IMDb, and sure enough, that makes sense. Hmm, very cool. I I like I kind of like when directors and um writers end up in the um film like a lot of people hate that but I I kind of like this kind of oh, easter oh. eggs. Yeah, me too. It's a total Hitchcock thing, man. It's totally cool. Oh yeah. I am Brundlefly. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. So were there any things in this film that you did not like? I Man, you think, you know, being that I just watched it, I would have this laundry list of things from memory, but all I can remember is how much I enjoyed it. So I'm going to pass that off to you. I don't have any complaints. To be honest, like, for what this was and what I was expecting it to be, it was pretty much on point. Like, the only thing I can say that I was disappointed in is there was no fly vision scene where 
you see him like with a fly head and you actually see the from the point of view from like the fly eyes at least that i noticed or anything like that which if i remember correctly that's a pretty classic scene from the original um the fly where you actually see it and i was kind of disappointed not to see that but yeah it was for what i was expecting this was pretty spot on like it was actually a bit better than i was expecting just because the acting was really good and just the the like slow transformation was just very well done i yeah i really like this film you know i'm not nitpicking but i will say one thing that surprised me since you brought up things that happened in the original that didn't happen in this remake was the creepy ending of the original where the fly and half person help me help that really creepy scene in the original they didn't do anything like that in this one and they really couldn't because they changed the end of it but a reference like that like maybe they should have been watching the 1958 fly in the background that would have been kind of cool that would have been great yeah i will say that like at the end of the film um gina davis's character like shoots the fly um jeff goldworm bloom um (laughs) fly bloom gold fly, whatever <laughs> yeah and um she just like shoots him and that was a bit of a letdown it's kind of like i mean he accepted it he kind of wanted her to but i oh just man wanted something more to that like to tie everything together i mean it kind of showed how much he was suffering and everything you know it was the right thing to do but i just kind of wish there was a little more to it than just for shooting him at the end that yeah no that was totally a heart wrenching scene. Jeff Goldblum as the complete transformed mutated flies on the ground crawling barely alive, and she's got that shotgun aimed at him, and he grabs the barrel and puts it on his head. I was like my heart stopped. I was like wow. Yeah. You that know was, that was a powerful scene. Like, and then I was like, shoot him. <laughs> Yeah, this is but, not a happy ending by any means. I, I feel I felt that's bad totally for totally okay by me. Oh yeah, it was it was a fun movie. It was well made and um, it was it's a great introduction to uh, David Cronenberg. I feel because it's it's gross. There's a lot of um, body horror, but it's not. There's still a good plot, and I don't think that the body horror overshadows the plot and the drama and things like that. I think it's a nice balance, at least from what I've heard. Um, we have in store for the rest of the month with um, some of his other films we may or may not be watching. Yes, sir. So if you had to rate this uh, film, what would you give it? I'm pretty comfortable with an 8.5. I'm going to give it a solid 8. Um, yeah, it was a great film. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. A little disappointed with the ending, I guess because I thought it could have been a little bit more, and I'm still bothered by the fact that there was no um, fly vision because it's such an iconic scene from the original but and really the main complaint is it's it's a Cronenberg film you're not there's it's not going to be for everybody so if if you're not into that kind of stuff you're not going to enjoy it but if you are and you're not bothered by it it's a great film I agree so with that being said are we ready to uh, jump off into what we're doing next sounds like a plan to me All right, guys, so this wraps up The Fly, but stay tuned for next time where we are going to review the 1983 Videodrome. Oh, this ought to be good as we re-enter the Cronenberg universe. Actually, um, you ever see the show Rick and Morty? Uh, No. There's a great great episode where um, they accidentally um, mutate the entire population of the planet into these... um, into these bug creatures and so they start calling it the Cronenberg verse that they eventually leave it's um it's pretty hilarious like oh it looks like we just Cronenberg this whole planet that's freaking awesome it's good to know that some people will be able to see now from now on I will always know what that reference is oh, yeah. that way they're like hey Dave how would you like to be in a Cronenberg planet like hell no <laughs> I mean, somewhere out there, there's a Cronenberg version of us. It's just like these mutated bug people. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's us from the Cronenberg <laughs> Well, after we review all five movies, maybe we can say which Cronenberg universe we would live in. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, everybody. So thanks for watching, and join us next time as we continue Cronenberg Month. Till then, have a good night. Get on the next one. Oh, see you, little guy.